The human body is a major object of craving and attachment. Suffering is the inevitable consequence. Look at the body. It's a heap of flesh and blood, two feet wide and six feet long, that is changing every moment. Body Contemplation Upon arrival, Mei Chi Gao met Ajahn Gongma at the monastery's main sala. After paying her respects, she told him about her doubts and disquiet regarding the events that clouded her spiritual environment and threatened to undermine her calm and concentration. Her meditation had not gone smoothly since Ajahn Kampan's disrobing, and she did not understand why. Ajahn Gongma knew, intuitively, that her strong mental focus needed to be directed away from the pursuit of external phenomena with its attachment to form and toward a full examination of her own personal being. Because her former teacher had fallen victim to carnal desires, he insisted that she start by initiating a comprehensive review of her physical body. Ajahn Gongma suggested that Mei Chi Gao begin body contemplation by focusing on the disgusting features and inherent impurities associated with the human body, starting with head hair, body hair, nails, teeth, and skin, then working inward to flesh, sinews, bones, marrow, kidneys, heart, membranes, spleen, lungs, intestines, bowels, stomach, feces, bile, phlegm, pus, blood, sweat, fat, tears, skin grease, saliva, mucus, rheum, and urine. He insisted that she cease focusing on the external phenomena that had so fascinated her up to then, and turn the full force of her attention inward to investigate the physical components of the bodily presence that she identified as herself. Respectfully, but hesitantly, Mei Chi Gao accepted his advice without objection. But she was not satisfied. For her, focusing inward meant repeating the mantra Buddha until her mind dropped into a state of deep calm. Ajahn Mun taught her this simple practice many years before, and she felt stubbornly reluctant to change. Certain she already knew the way of meditation, she was not prepared to put Ajahn Gongma's advice to a serious test. She stuck doggedly to her usual practice, even though the results continued to bring disappointment and uncertainty. The longer she resisted Ajahn Gongma, the more her mind refused to drop into a fully calm and concentrated state. For months, stubbornness prevented her mind from converging into stillness. Mei Gao became exasperated at her lack of progress and felt herself at wit's end. One night, as she walked in meditation, she began to rebuke herself harshly. It had been raining since nightfall, but she refused to go inside. The time had come to teach herself a lesson. Pacing back and forth all night in the pouring rain, she chastised her stubborn, conceited attitude. Determined to not give up until she had redeemed herself, she examined her faults over and over again to find out why her heart was so unyielding. Although Ajahn Kongma provided her with all the right conditions she needed to progress in meditation, she had doggedly refused to give way. She knew her stance was unreasonable and that it must be changed. She asked herself, How can I really know the truth when the mind that I use to acknowledge the truth is so deluded? The following day, having fully accepted her faults, she resolved to make amends for her intransigence. Solemnly prostrating before the Buddha, she silently asked heartfelt forgiveness of Ajahn Gongma. After preparing her mind by intoning auspicious chants, she began meditating in earnest on the nature of the human body. Mei Gao contemplated the body by meditating on its inherently impure and repulsive nature. She first reflected on the obvious disgusting features that afflict the body while alive. The nose was constantly filled with mucus, the ears with wax, and the skin exuded sweat and grease. The body continually excreted feces and urine, and, without constant cleaning, it reeked of foul odors and suffered discomfort. With constant practice, she began to understand clearly that much of her discontent stemmed from embracing the body as the core of her existence and regarding it as a central feature of self and personality. Though it was not obvious in her ordinary consciousness and attitudes, this belief was fundamental and deep-seated, operating at a subliminal and instinctive level of consciousness. Then, by embodying this basic instinct in her conscious activities, she projected a very concrete sense of self into all her actions. She realized that a person's life is often deliberately planned around desires related to the body, constant concern with matters of appearance, fashion, self-esteem, and personal comfort. 
by meditating on the body's impure nature, Mei Chi Gao began to experience it as inherently repulsive and unstable, something that repelled rather than attracted desire. Through the daily practice of body contemplation, she gradually reduced the craving that had built up around the body, working to free herself from the strong sense of self associated with it. In her daily meditations, she took the body apart, piece by piece, layer by layer. Investigating skin, she saw it as a thin veneer of tissue covering the body's flesh and internal organs. Although at a casual glance it might appear clean and attractive, closer inspection revealed a scaly, wrinkled layer exuding sweat and grease in abundance. Only constant scrubbing and cleansing made it seem bearable to oneself and to others. Hair may be brushed and styled with care and admired for its overall appearance, but let a few strands fall into a plate of food and they quickly induce a reflexive loss of appetite. Head hair and body hair are inherently filthy, which is the reason they must be constantly washed and bathed. In fact, nothing that comes into contact with any part of the human body remains clean for long, as the whole body is filthy by its very nature. Due to the filth and odors accumulated from our bodies, clothing and bedding must be constantly laundered. Even food becomes filthy once it is ground between the teeth and mixed with the body's secretions. The whole body shares the same repugnant characteristics. After deeply contemplating the natural filthiness of the body's external features, Mei Chi Gao investigated its internal organs and their secretions, and its many foul excretions. Having carefully examined hair, nails, teeth, and skin with a growing sense of dismay, Mei Chi Gao mentally peeled back the outer layer and visualized the body stripped of skin, the underlying flesh exposed, raw and bloody. Close examination of this glistening mass of blood-stained tissue produced nauseating revulsion. Keeping in mind that this sight was no aberration, but rather the reality of the body she had lived with her entire life, she delved deeper into the sinews, the bones, and the internal organs. Bands of flesh hugged the bones like raw meat. She envisioned the heart, liver, kidneys, spleen, lungs, stomach, intestines, and bowels, all sloshing around in mucus-coated cavities formed within the contour of the rib cage and hip bones, and held in place by a plaster of fibrous membranes. Methodically, she visualized each organ within its own context, each encased in fat and oozing blood and viscous secretions, each enclosing putrid excretions waiting to be discharged. By using her strong mental focus to explore deeply into the body's internal composition, Mei Chi Gao saw for the first time, with penetrative insight, the body's true nature. Seeing it clearly with wisdom, she was able to extend that insight to include all bodily substances and realize that they all had the same exact nature. She understood that the entire body was disgusting and repulsive, and that no stable or satisfactory personal essence could be found there. At that moment of profound realization, her mind suddenly dropped into total stillness. A small, faint spot of light, located deep inside her heart, began to flicker and glow. It pulsed and grew brighter, expanding its radiance until her entire conscious being was captured in light and became bright, clear, buoyant, and supple. She withdrew from meditation at dawn and completed her morning chores. A subtle sense of harmony and integration pervaded her every movement. The reserve and hesitancy that formerly showed in her demeanor disappeared. She was happy and cheerful as she offered food to the monks for their morning meal. Noticing her dramatic change, Ajahn Gongma announced for all to hear, Mei Chi Gao, you're on the right path now. Stay resolute. With her meditation back on track, Mei Chi Gao stayed with Ajahn Gongma for several more months, taking advantage of the opportunity of living with a good teacher to deepen her concentration and cultivate her powers of wisdom. She understood now why Ajahn Kampan's meditation had failed to protect him from ordinary and base desires rooted in attachment to physical form. She understood the powerful attraction of sensual craving, and she knew the way to neutralize it. When she finally felt confident that she had developed a solid foundation in her practice, she decided to return to help the other nuns at the Banhui Sai nunnery. She was concerned that they still lacked a reliable teacher to guide them on the correct path. She believed that she could now contribute her part and help fulfill that role. <laughs>